Howdy mates, here we go. Here's the uh, next part on the historical interpretation based in Fort King. So as I mentioned in my last video, when I was talking briefly about Wiley Thompson, he was actually a Indian removal agent based in Fort King. And another fact that I forgot to mention too, in the last video was it was in 1830 that Andrew Jackson actually established the Indian Removal Act which was basically to relocate all natives not even just not not just the Seminole but thousands of other tribes towards uh, west of the Mississippi so you figure you know like Oklahoma so you know, those particular conflicts then led up to, and then those two massacres that I mentioned in my last video, led up to the Second Seminole War. And so, really what the big deal was for the Second Seminole War was for the colonizers to establish more territory towards, you know, central and even closer to south Florida. And pretty much at that point, Andrew Jackson really had enough. He basically was just burning their villages, wanting to massacre them if they wouldn't uh, move or relocate. You know, he basically made it like an executive order for them to relocate. And the issue is, you know, during some treaties, you know, that occurred in uh, 1832, you know, there were some tribes, or I shouldn't say some tribes, but the Seminoles were thinking, okay, since we didn't necessarily agree to the treaties, that means we don't, we're not going to relocate. But the thing is, they only had a three-year timeline to do so. And you figure then, as it got into 1834, basically by then, war seemed inevitable. So, Second Seminole War is said to have lasted... Uh, give or take 10 or so years, approximately. But, uh, so that occurred. But then we fast forward into 1855, and essentially that began the conflict of the Third Seminole War. And pretty much what that entailed was just basically uh, removing the remainder of the Seminole tribe. Uh, either, either some of them relocated to Oklahoma, but not all of them did. Uh, some of them uh, simply just, they retreated down into the Everglades. And, you know... That was partially okay with the colonizers because they did not necessarily want that land. And for another, you know, the Everglades is a very difficult place to traverse. I would know <laughs> firsthand since it's mostly made up of cypress swamps. It's very difficult to pass through. So, you know, it's due to these particular, those particular conflicts that essentially now why we know that the Seminoles or what's left of them are clear down in the deep south. But that obviously wasn't always the case. You know, they used to range pretty much throughout the entire state. 
So it's it, it it's one of those things like despite the Seminole nearly being exterminated completely, there were some that did survive and yet still cherish and allow new generations to still be existent. So really it proves a point just how just how resilient they truly were because there weren't many native tribes that did such a thing. You know, were able to survive and then still stay in their homeland. So, you gotta admit, like, the way how the United States got Florida, it was brutal. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat that. It was absolutely brutal. And it wasn't just out of good treaties and promises. Rather, it was much more by brute force. And lots of killing unfortunately so it's just it's one of those things like it's good to know about your history so that it doesn't have to repeat again and that's the thing like personally I think if there were people who I really wanted to talk to, who really know the land here, they would have to be the Seminole. Or the Miccosukee. Or among other tribes. Because you gotta think, like, this was their land before the colonizers came about. They were here before us. So they truly know this land very well indeed. I mean, think about Betty Osceola as an example. A dear friend and a great mentor. You know, for those of you who haven't heard of her, you really should look into her. Like, her work that she has done, both for the Everglades and just... For conservation. I mean, in cultural preservation for another. She is truly one of a kind. And I'm just grateful that she is someone that I do know. And have had a chance to meet. So that's what I mean. Gotta be open to learning. So... All right, you guys, take care. And of course, if any of you want to read further about it, I will soon provide some images of uh, interpretive signs that at least is shared. But really though, it's one of those things, if you really want to know the history, sometimes you gotta talk to other people about it. Because sometimes they have direct accounts from their relatives so hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching and journey on a journey is outwards take care folks see ya